why don't you and your disciples fast, or why y'all not fasting now, like the Pharisees and John the Baptist's disciples? Oh, that's so that's so rich right there. Uh, and before I before I jump in there and get to you, here it is. <clears throat> Being stuck in the box, don't miss this. Dr. O'Neill is not determined by the age of your church, but it's dictated by the attitude of the members. Being stuck in the box is not determined by the age of the church. It's dictated by the attitude of the members, which is a dichotomy, because here, here it is. Yes, In other words, your church can be three years old mm -hmm. and be stuck. Yes. Well. Or it can be 130 years old and be free. Well. Or vice versa. Amen. And what determines that is not how long you've been organized. Yes. What determines that is everybody understanding that we are, are an organism. Okay, here it is in the text. Yes, <clears throat> it said, they say, why ain't y'all fasting? Like the Pharisees and John the Baptist disciples. Mm -hmm. And Jesus gives them this spiel about, you know, why you fasting, why the bridegroom's here, this, that, and the other. And he goes on, no, no. But here was what was so revelatory for me. John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. <clears throat> According to the Jewish law, a young man, women couldn't do it. I'm not chauvinistic. That was the culture. Because uh, I believe in women preachers and pastors, and I embrace all of that. Uh, but here it is. <clears throat> you had to be about 30 to qualify to become a rabbi. You couldn't be a rabbi at 20, 25. You, according to Jewish law, you needed to be 30. So John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. And he uh, comes out of the gate. Now watch his spirit. Don't forget John the Baptist is the son of Zacharias, who's a priest. His mother is Elizabeth, who's from a priestly family. Right? They know <clears throat> all about the rules, the rituals, the regulations, and the routine. <clears throat> but when John the Baptist gets ready to start his church, he says, I don't think I'm going to submit a resume to First Baptist Jerusalem. Yes, sir. I'm going to go out in the wilderness and start my church from scratch. All right? Because I don't even like to wear robes like my daddy. I'm not I'm not worried about that. I, I'm going to preach in my dashiki made out of camel's hair. You know what I'm saying? And I might bypass grandsons and uh, K&W. I think I'm going to go to Bahama Breeze and get me some jerk wings. I'm going to bypass, you know, some, some milk and honey. You got what I'm saying? I'm going to bypass that other stuff. Right. But look at the attitude of his disciples. Now, he, he doesn't have a spirit of tradition. But his fledgling congregation have already slipped in to the traditional. And they're doing the same thing that the Pharisees are doing. And everybody's noticing it and looking at it. And gradually, they are looking just like what John the Baptist tried to escape from. That's right. That's right. The very atmosphere he tries to liberate them from, yeah, yeah. they are slipping and sinking right back into it. That's right. And what Jesus is trying to help us understand is being stuck like that ain't determined by the age of the ministry. Because you can have a fledgling church just like John the Baptist and be stuck. Yes, it can happen to you. Yes, <clears throat> but uh, it depends on the attitude of the members. Right. Now let me close by sharing this. Um, this 
growing, vibrant, on fire church that my wife and I planted um, would have been 10 years old this year. <clears throat> but it's no longer in existence. It actually, uh, the, it dwindled down and they merged with another church. All right, we directed them to do that. And, and, and here's the mistake that we made, Dr. O'Neill. Listen, this is the mistake we made. <clears throat> we inadvertently took them back to where we all left from. without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. We were in a place like this where some people would consider a storefront. Mm -hmm. And it was a house of healing and help. And people were coming, people were being blessed. Mm -hmm. And we outgrew the space. And uh, um, what we should have done, and, and I'm not suggesting this for you, 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 you know what's best for you all. Uh, we should have just gone to two services and stayed where we were. Um, I, I had gotten called to another church, a Missionary Baptist Church, and I went to that church. Because, uh, you know, the, my ministry has been uh, one of uh, uh, being helpful. Uh, I'm like a repairman, you know, something get tore up, I go in there and try to help put it back together. This church had had two splits. And they had had a, their congregation size was about 1,500. They had an 1,100 seat sanctuary. They went through two and a half, almost three splits. And uh, when I went there, you got, you got about 60, 70 people showing up in a place that'll seat 1,100 folk. You can play badminton over there, <laughs> volleyball over there, and have croquet in the middle, and, and half court somewhere else. I mean, it was just sad. And so I, I got back to Greenville one Sunday, and there were people all out. The, you could get about 170 people in there with the overflow, had chairs similar to this. They were all out on the sidewalk, almost in the parking lot. And I'm like, well, wonder what's going on? You know, and I said, I said, I said excuse me, let me get back. So, well, y'all out already? And the guy was like, no, nah, dude, we, we trying to get in. <laughs> they were trying to get in. <clears throat> so instead of us starting the two services, we moved about five miles away from that location. Not even thinking about some of the people that were there could walk because it was a, a, a community right there. We left the community and changed our location and had a 7,500 square foot place that would accommodate everybody and more. And it did, <clears throat> but we lost some people. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we had some people that were kind of filtering in, uh, not realizing that they were just unhappy folk and mad about where they had been and uh, <clears throat> really won't being led by the Spirit of the Lord like we should have been <clears throat> and uh, found a church for sale. Nice A-frame, six acres. Seat about three, three fifth, or whatever. Like, yeah, this is nice. Got a nice fellowship hall and all that. But the context of the people that were coming, they didn't need that. They didn't. They didn't want that. So the only thing we did was <clears throat> we inadvertently we changed the whole dynamics of what we had going on. You understand? And and people just began to kind of fall off, and all of a sudden you're like, what a what a what a what a young folk, what a young folk. You know, what happened to what happened to my to my to my boys? You know, that were cracked out and recovering and getting off the weed and alcohol and stuff. We took them right out of these chairs and put them on a pew. You know, and this generation that we after, they not really feeling that. You know, that whole thing. What whatever what whatever it is that God leads you in, you know. Stay with that. Stay with that. <clears throat> and, and remember, uh, uh, being in that box ain't determined by the age of the church. 
it's the attitude of the members. You know, you can have your whole congregation could be 60 and up, but if they got the right attitude, it's going to do what it need to do. You know what I mean? It's going to open up those doors for the youth and all those kind of things. I'm begging, please, whatever you do, don't get stuck in the box. Thank you for joining us. If you've enjoyed this message, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Shepherd's Way Christian Church, or visit us on our website, www.swaycc.org. That's www.swaycc.org to hear more. To connect with us, follow us on Facebook. You can join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We're located at 140 East Vance Street, Zebulon, North Carolina. Again, thank you for listening.